Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, first of all, yes, thank you very much for accepting this proposal. This will be um, an experimental intervention, so in the sense that we are really experimenting something, uh, because um, me and Alessandro will live, uh, we come from the same city, but actually we never lived in the same city at the same time, and um, uh, we come from different backgrounds, but somehow our paths al always um, met and um, intertwined. So um, I'm going to read now. Um, this experimental intervention is first and foremost a dialogical encounter between Alessandro and myself. We want to explore a space of contact by connecting the proximity and the performativity of our field works and of our political and poetical languages. If the proposed title for this conference incorporates a question, then questioning will be our embodied methodology for thinking choreographically, for negotiating, discussing and challenging the creative and theoretical articulation between dance, disability and law. In this question-based interview, there will be no definite answers other than corporeal responses, physical and sensible attempts, proliferating in other infinite questions. In a temporal frame we have, we will try to touch the matter and the masters of our personal and collective tipping points. In this aim, we identified four areas of questioning four areas of potential interventions, four acts of potentiality, otherness, invisible laws, language to come, choreopoetics of touch. Black bodies, white bodies, female bodies, male bodies, young bodies, old bodies, beautiful bodies, Broken bodies. Dried bodies. And wrong bodies. The difference has for centuries determined social structures and categories by defining certain bodies as the norm and marking those which fall outside the norm, outside the law, as other. If the bodily history is largely a history of otherness, if the degree of otherness is defined by the degree of variation from the norm, how do you deviate the norm?
The law is mad. The law is fantastic, states the philosopher Jacques Derrida, declaring the very core of legal truth remains essentially inaccessible, in particular in regard to democratic values of economic, political and social equality. By unfolding this deconstructionist clue, the law is that before which one can never be. It implies an act which is virtual, potential, a promise constituted by its ability to make promises. A gesture that demands its association with an open future, always beyond the visible, in the avenir, invisible. Can you dance the potential of the avenir? integrating, desegregating, incorporating disabled body movements and aesthetics. How many meanings proliferate around and beyond the tipping point of the disabled body worlding? feeling the infinite corporeal senses beyond the phenomenological laws of the language? What about choreographing difference as sense ability, that is, the abilities the can-do of senses to be composed and performed. If the corporeal awareness of your disability engenders new proprioceptive potentialities and sensorial abilities, how do you choreograph your sense ability.
touch is the medium for excellence of interiority. Touching or being touched can concern an intimacy that cannot be approached with the hand. Touching continues to be touching as long as it does not capture the other's subjective autonomy. Touch implies being in contact tactfully. my mothers, my other, who taught me poetics of touching choreographically on the difference of female body writings with a new art to come to a tactile language. With a core a core poetics of touch, I we right of touching as a movement from the external to the internal as a reciprocal experience which in the act of dancing calls for bodily responses as the actualization of the infinite possibilities circulating in the economy of dance interchanges. If, as Lucy de Garay states, perhaps cultivating touch can still save us, The multiplicity of dances, visible difference, still save us and reserve to us a more rightful place. Different presentations, different modes of presentations, mm -hmm. and, and somehow feel like they 
interrelate mm -hmm. and overlap in different ways that they pull our attention to certain things. So the performance aspect, for example, in yours against the with the questions, mm -hmm. and the poetry words, as well as the sort of references to thinkers or um, theories. Um, it just makes me, it's not really a question, it's just a reflection on on the similarities and also maybe the difference of expression sometimes. Um, yeah, just a reflection on that, which is great yeah. in terms of its diversity. And it's, it, even in testing our sense of inclusivity towards each other's differences, mm. it just makes you think of that. Yeah, um, actually this is our first occasion in which we interact together because as I said we are we are friends and of course I come from a more academic uh, background but we always wanted to do together and put together also our differences mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it's all a question of language sometimes yes. so we wanted to try to put our languages together and see what can come. Um, it, it can seem also abstract, but um, yeah, there are references behind, of course, the spoken word, but of course also behind the uh, dancing words. So, yeah, do you want to add something? Mm -hmm. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just thinking, actually, because there was so much sort of... Um, I don't know, there was a lot of depth really to what you were saying and proposing. You had the, obviously, the main questions flashed up on the presentation screen, but um, I think it would be great if you gave, if you did it again, if you like gave people almost like your script. Okay. Just, mm -hmm. just, just like a personal thing, because then maybe sometimes you learn more about performance after you've seen it, you kind of reflect on it, you have time, you know? Yeah. So. Because I was so kind of like engrossed in what Alessandro was doing, yeah, that I kind of couldn't always hear what you were saying because I was watching you. So it's that kind of like, yeah, there's a lot happening. Yeah, we, right. we were discussing we're this. We're discussing. You are there different layers and languages. Mm. Yeah, we discussed about um, the amount of information you get at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So there is this, and there is me moving, and there is at the same time text that you want to understand. Mm -hmm. and it so depends how kind of like whether the disorientation of that is deliberate or not, because you know, if you want that effect, then that works really well. Mm -hmm. But obviously, this they do also correspond together, so it would be nice to kind of be able to digest it like afterwards or something. <laughs> This was our experiment about, it's like yeah. just how, let's see how we can give these things without uh, uh, maybe overload. Mm. <laughs> but I know it's, yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, but still, at the same time, I think that we take the material in also in a different way. Yeah. So somehow, yeah, there were moments that, you know, I would lose some kind of phrase, as you said, or some words, but at the same time, it's not that I did not hear it. So in a way there was a, a little bit more of an unconscious also like mm -hmm. taking in of the material and to me it's very interesting also. Mm -hmm. so I don't okay. feel I miss anything now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting, yeah. But it was combined in me. And I think that the space, you were just, you offered so much space in between your words mm -hmm. that it was really lovely also to kind of have the space only for him and then I combined it. Yeah, that's interesting also in terms of performativity because, of course, when you give a paper, I, I never speak, of course, so I'm not a performer, so I speak uh, faster. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, um, in, in this moment I try to put some atten attention, of course, to try to, to give a read, of course, in a, it was my read. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and, yeah, giving to words and to theories also a read. Um, because when I was talking about touch, when I was talking about, or we were talking about laws, um, there were theories behind those words. So also to make dancing theory was for us um, um, challenging. 
uh, theories in the enemy doesn't come, you know, from dense studies, but comes from other kind of approaches. So for us, it was interesting to put together and try to construct and deconstruct, you know, different mm -hmm. uh, perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see that the process, did the text come first and did you work on the text after the words with the performance or did you work in We speak a lot. Mm -hmm. We speak a lot. I mean, we... we it was, yeah, I think both ways research, like some research on the movement, and some research on the words. And then uh, we kind of very short time to find a way like how to combine things together without being descriptive because it's not our goal. And but still like just give something that really is. Yeah, it's a challenge, a challenge because in my research, for example, I focus my attention on female dance on female mm -hmm. studies, uh, but every time that anyway, you know, language, dance language is dance language, and uh, it's, it's um, different, you know? And, um, but when I see, for example, his pieces on video or by life, I can see the actualization sometimes of what I research on. So, so when I see something, I say, okay, this movement reminds me, it resonates me in uh, something that is abstract, and it's virtual, and it's potential, and I can see in, in your potential movement. Mm -hmm. So that's why we can find sometimes. Uh, but this, this, this was actually our first time that we put together and put into practice, basically, um, yeah, our movements. I was curious about the movement choices. And did you improvise, or and also the space here? Did, did you have to set up somewhere else, or did you respond to come in and respond to the space, or and how it's up relating to her text? Like I, I couldn't. I, like there were times when I thought, oh, he's exploring. I was one. I was imagining that you were you know, exploring a joint or something, but I didn't know if it was set choreography or if you were responding to things. Or I was improvising. You were. Yeah. Um, the space I that's is a kind of setup I use also for my piece, but so I just try to adapt it here. So, here. so you responded to the place. Yeah, yeah, to the place, and it's like a live interaction with place and the and with the words. Yeah, not try not again to, to be too much descriptive, and uh, yeah, trying to. It's, um, this is really interesting to know technically actually how this works and um, the projection that comes up at the moment here. It would be quite interesting to maybe have an opportunity to play with that a little bit and I was wondering about how close uh, the performer or the spectators can be to that, those images. And the, what the limitations are and what the possibilities are. Just but it, yeah, it's something I'm doing because I'm creating a solo about uh, a personal story of invisible disability. And I play with this type of technique, which in the theater, it's, yeah, it has a, a different impact because of the dimension and then also the, the clean space. You know. yeah, just. It's interesting for me because um, of just an investigation I'm doing myself and it's partly about uh, <coughs> what that enables you to see because just because of the size and the quality of the image. Um, yeah. And that's I'd be it. interested to uh, as that, uh, just to know maybe to go after is about how it um, set that up and how it works and how to play with that. Um, and I was really interested as well. I don't know if it was intentional, but there was a lot of um, it's a real difference in terms of the information that came through the piece when there was no sound. I'm particularly working in this area about the way, because I've got something back through your movement about the 
the weight uh, given in the parts of the body and how you are using the body and that is very clear through the sound and the door and, and the sort of uh, the movement of the door and how it reacts to the movement and just really contrasted them to the way the sound was used in that final section. I didn't know if that was a sort of conscious decision or that just happened. It just happened. Okay. Okay. I can give an interpretation, but because maybe I have filters, you know, that and I also have tools maybe to interpret, to sometimes to overinterpret a movement. And um, maybe you, you can, I think it, it was the fixing, fitting a box that she's fixing. Is that a piece of the sound? It's like you, you were talking about the difference given by the sound process. Yeah, the sound process and the contrast and then the information that about how you are using the process, how you are using the response to maybe the text and also the space that you are in. Yeah, it's not really a question, but the observation. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Good, Luke. Can I just ask a really functional question? Um, what was the Irigaray text that you were referencing? What was the? The Irigaray. Ah, okay. Um, it's perhaps um, Touch Can Still Save Us. Perhaps Touch Can Still Yeah, it's a, it's a very small essay. I can give you the reference. Thank perhaps you. Cultivating Touch Can Save Us. Can save us. But uh, she has written a lot about uh, touch. Last question. Uh, I know it is so much question, but I got uh, some uh, uh, um, like um, um, <laughs> my impression was that it is very grand <coughs> in some. Um, a literature uh, of a German uh, literature um, and uh, even grotesque uh, 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 of shadowing. Uh, it, it could be from literature in Switzerland, but as well even Congo. Um, maybe, maybe I mean because. Uh, I came from English literature, and actually I, I have been educated in English literature. For me something like intention to the discipline in thinking, like uh, German philosophers. But uh, on the other side it was balanced with the freshness uh, of uh, delicate uh, material with on the body and uh, I think it, it will be grow up to the big picture big performance then uh, some quality could be be shrink to be minimal uh, more um, uh, not so powerful for a person who is who is dancing and for a viewer as well because for me it was very intensive mm -hmm. and, uh, it is uh, difficult I think to get the whole performance on, on so high tension Intense, intensive okay. experiment. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to the end of the session, so we give thank and I'll